Sam Altman is out at OpenAI. It felt like a hallucination, and it still does, but he confirmed the news. He's gone. We're going to record an emergency podcast to break down the news and explain what it means, and we're going to do it right after this. Welcome to Big Technology Podcast Emergency Edition. Sam Altman has been fired by OpenAI Edition. Holy moly. I have been looking at my Twitter feed since this thing broke just a few hours ago. Immediately after, I published Friday edition of the podcast and said, there's no way, no way we're waiting until Wednesday to cover the news on the podcast. So instead... We're dropping an emergency episode here where we're going to talk about what happened, what it means, where OpenAI goes from here, and who did it. Because the board has been involved in the, literally the most shocking firing in tech, I would have to say, in a decade or longer. And we, are, we don't know exactly why we did it, but we can talk a little bit about who did it, and that might give us some clues. We're joined today by the senior AI writer at VentureBeat, Sharon Goldman. Sharon, welcome to the show. Alex, nice to see you. Friday afternoon. You. I what know, a, serious a mic drop, literally. Absolutely, butting into evening, but we couldn't let it uh, uh, go any longer. You have been um, covering OpenAI very closely. You just wrote about their board, which we're going to get into. But first, can you just like tell us a little bit about the news? So Sam Altman is out as OpenAI CEO. Uh, the, the COO is stepping in, Mira is stepping in as the new interim CEO. They are looking for a new permanent CEO. Greg right. Brockman, the who was the chairman of the board. And he was and the a, chairman of the board, president of OpenAI, stepped down as chairman from of the board. The board. Mm -hmm. He's going to remain at OpenAI. Um, right. Try to contextualize this for us. This is a massive shuffling, uh, but how big is it? It's huge. Dev Day, OpenAI's Dev Day was just last week. Just earlier this week, there was news that OpenAI was looking for a big infusion of money from Microsoft. Um, Microsoft CEO Satya Nadella was on stage uh, with Sam Altman last week at Dev Day, touting you know, their partnership to build AGI together. Just yesterday, I understand, um, Sam Altman was on stage um, for the APAC conference. So... Uh, it sounded like it came as a surprise to everybody, not just us, right? Absolutely. We we don't know what happened yet. We'll probably break at some point this weekend, um, but we can we can speculate a little bit without being irresponsible. The business seemed like it was in good shape. Um, you know, maybe there was like something that was going on, but this was clearly a conduct related issue. Now, let me see if I can pull the exact language from the board. But basically, they said that Sam had been inconsistent with his communication, and they could no longer rely on or, or trust him to do the job effectively. Some mealy mouth PR language. What's your read on what actually happened? I feel like that it, it is mealy mouth, but it's also not, you know, we wish Sam well. And as he goes home to be with his family either. So, you know, it definitely, it dropped in the afternoon. There was some, there is some verbiage that indicates some kind of misconduct, whether that's financial or otherwise, I don't think anyone knows. I read that there's some kind of all hands meeting going on right now at OpenAI. Um, yep. Maybe that will offer some clues, but um, it sounds like everyone, no one really has a, a, a sure handle on what happened, whether it was financial. I'm wondering if it has something to do with Microsoft in some way. Um, then um, uh, uh, our editorial director at VentureBeat, Michael Nunez, was at Dev Day. He said there was a little bit of weirdness um, at the press briefing and during mm. Dev Day um, where it seemed like something was a little off. But So I don't know if it goes as far back as that or not. We do have some details coming out of that all-hands meeting. So first of all, uh, Mira Marathi, who is the OpenAI interim CEO, was the COO. By the way, well, we'll talk about her in a moment. Very capable leader. Uh, told staff, according to the information, um, told staff that uh, that Microsoft uh, had the... Wait, okay. Sorry, I'm just like reading in real time. Uh, its relationship with Microsoft was stable 
and that uh, Satya Nadella and Kevin Scott, the CTO of Microsoft, had expressed the utmost confidence in OpenAI following the news. So clearly they've been communicating that way. And Ilya Sutskever, who's the uh, chief AI researcher, told uh, the staff the experience will make us feel closer as they pick up the pieces from Altman's departure. So that's what they're saying inside the company. Where does the, you know, we, we so as we try to figure out what happened, where does the loss of Sam Altman leave this company? I mean, it seems like they really were in the hits business as all this technology was starting to be commoditized. And while he wasn't playing like the chief product manager role, like he plays a big role in terms of what they develop, what they develop and how they decide to bet on those hits, right? Absolutely. I mean, in some ways you could say, you know, why care so much about Sam Altman? He wasn't, you know, the brains, the scientist behind the AI, behind the large language model, but he was the face of open AI. I mean, for the past year, he's been arguably the most forward-facing person in AI. He's built the company. He's been out there on a world tour touting uh, uh, GPT-4 and beyond, and he's been there every step of the way. So it's hard to imagine that this doesn't kind of rock the boat uh, pretty significantly. Um, you know, so yeah, I'm, I'm interested but, to see what happens. But more than a cheerleader, right? He's yes. actually like the, he's like, he's the, he came to this company as this, you know, formerly the CEO of Y Combinator. They built ChatGPT and Dolly on the transformer model, which was developed inside Google. What has made OpenAI what it is, is a keen sense of how to take existing technology and turn it into products. And who better to do that than someone that's run a startup incubator? You effectively need to be doing that to remain competitive. So, and I think what there is was it? something about uh, he also, you know, he really touted that he didn't have equity in OpenAI. He yeah. he really seemed so focused on OpenAI's mission to develop AGI to benefit humanity. So I feel like that put him in this like really interesting place where people felt like he was straddling that balance between the nonprofit side that it had been previously and the profit side that it was moving towards in a commercial way. But talk about the competitive side right now, because if you lose that type of product thinker at the top, that startup thinker at the top, does OpenAI have the ability to compete in this much more heated up competitive world. I mean, before in the early days, right a year ago, it was just GPT 3.5, GPT 4. Now you have that, you have Anthropic, you have Gemini around the corner from Google. You have, uh, you even have Grok. I mean, you know, the list goes on. We right? also have Microsoft itself, which, yes. which a year ago was not competing with its investment in open AI, but ever since then has, and Microsoft, 365 Copilot just yesterday, I think, came out mm -hmm. as like its full product release. So I feel like that, you know, that uh, that timing is very in interesting as well. But talk again about let's just let's get to the competitiveness, though, right? Yeah. Like, are they going to be able to remain competitive in this fast field in this fast moving field without him? I think so. I mean, I, I I don't feel like OpenAI was just Sam Altman. I mean, I think that, uh, you know, Greg Brockman, I think Ilya Sutskiver, I think Mira, I think there's a lot of people in place. I'm sure that they're the, that sense of mission and the product itself. I mean, if GPT-5 is already in the works, then, you know, I can't imagine that things would just completely go haywire. But I do think this rocks the boat and leaves an open space for competitors. We're talking Anthropic, we're talking yeah. Microsoft, we're talking Google and Amazon. That to me seems like the biggest implication, right? Is that you're in a very fierce fight. You need the full team. You need the A team on the field. And I guess it the depends football analogy, they, right? but like you lose your quarterback, you're in trouble. I guess it depends who they choose as their next quarterback. So let's talk about the backup quarterback, not to kill this analogy any worse than we have. Uh, Mir Marathi, the COO, very impressive background uh, with Tesla working on AI. She's shepherded a lot of the chat GPT and Dolly work. What, what more can you tell us about her? Um, you know, she's also been out there as a strong face for open AI. Um, and, you know, I, I can't imagine that she wouldn't be. I think I was just looking on Twitter and there was already some kind of like gaming out there of who was uh, leading in the race for the role. And Mira Marathi was leading the pack. But, um, 
you know, so I think she's as definitely a permanent a CEO. tenor. What? As permanent, that she as might end up. Right? That would make sense right. to me. Right. Yeah. But, but yeah, so, but, okay, so people think that she's, what about her makes her someone who you think would have the chops to run this thing? Like, I'm not questioning it. I'm just kind of curious to hear about her characteristics and the work that she's done in the past that would that would make her the right fit that made the board think that she'd be the right fit for interim CEO. Well, I think as far as interim CEO, I feel like the fact that she was CTO, you know, put her in the right position. Perhaps, I mean, I'm very interested to know why Greg Brockman stepped down from the board, but, you know, I, it sounds like, you know, it, it wasn't for him to be in that position. So I feel like it was sort of a natural place for her to step up. You know, she was front and center in, at Dev Day. Um, so it would make sense that she would be the interim person. I'm not necessarily sure that she's going to be the pick for a permanent CEO. And I actually haven't reported that much on her specifically. So I, I feel like I'm not the best person to comment on her. Mm -hmm. um, but, um, you know, I definitely see that she'll be firmly in the mix for sure. There was a fortune profile of her that said yes. that she led the Dolly development, the ChatGPT development. She was crucial in the partnership with Microsoft. She has all these beliefs about trying to achieve artificial general intelligence. So she might slot Right in. I mean, I definitely feel like whoever is the next CEO would have to be someone who is as firmly devoted to that mission as Mira, as Sam, because everything I've read, everything I've you know heard about the company, what's right on their homepage and website, what their board is all about that we've been talking about is that mission. They're, that they're constantly mission critical, you know, AGI or bust. Okay, and there's even more news that's been breaking. This is coming from Axios. Microsoft was blindsided by OpenAI's ouster of C CEO Sam Altman. Uh, Ina Fried says its biggest partner, uh, one that has invested billions in the company, learned a minute before the rest of the world that Altman was out. So that's obviously, incredible. That's this incredible. Is, you know, we've talked a lot about mission and about Sam not taking equity. And I think this is an important moment to just pause and talk about a theme we've discussed on this podcast a bunch, which is that like when someone tells you that they're interested in like they're bettering the greater good of the world, ask some questions. I mean, it's interesting that Altman, who had this whole like, we're going to achieve AGI, we're going to repair the world, we're going to do universal basic income, et cetera, et cetera, did something. I mean, clearly he did something. Either it was this weird power struggle <laughs> that we're going to find out about, or what seems Anyway, I won't put a probability on it, but or he did something so bad that the board decided to fire him and not tell Microsoft, you know, and the fact I mean, that's just mind boggling Microsoft. It's not even just that Microsoft is OpenAI's biggest investor. It was just reported that OpenAI was looking for more money, a big infusion of more money all pointing to that mission of building AGI together. And then there's this complex um, relationship between Microsoft A and OpenAI, the, the nonprofit side, the for-profit company, that the, the two sides of OpenAI and, and the complex negotiations that must have been mm -hmm. put in place uh, to make that happen. So the idea that Microsoft wouldn't be in the loop here is, is incredible. Astonishing. Now, OpenAI is kind of a weird company, right? It's got this like it cat is. profit and uh, a status and a non nonprofit origin. Yes. It was always a little bit of a strange setup. And it's like, you know, then they built these like extremely viable commercial products, but their goal was to reach artificial general intelligence. I yes. mean, I'm sure there's some coherent thread through it all, but it just feels like like, I don't know, it's, I don't know, a science project meant to go wrong, which it clearly has. I feel like the, you know, that the idea behind it was to set up from their standpoint was to set up a way to be able to fund their mission while, um, you know, while still uh, offering a commercial opportunity so that it could be a win win. Um, but I and, and, and in that way, kind of creating an entirely new governance uh, way of governing a company that like right. this is very unusual the setup that they have with Microsoft it's really <laughs> something very brand new and this piece that I wrote that I mentioned uh, the lawyers I spoke to said that they said it's very unusual kind of setup 
They had not seen anything like that before. But, you know, Anthropic also has like an unusual setup as well um, in their goals towards AGI. So this, I thought that this was starting to be some kind of like a new trend, but perhaps in this case, it's, you know, who knows what's going to happen. You know, as you were talking to me, I was like, this sounds like very like FTX-ish. Not, not the Ponzi scheme, but this whole like, we're going to set up a corporate structure to achieve our mission, which was kind of like the same thing as Sam Bigman Freed. And then reading your piece, it turns out there is a link. I mean, it's not the Ponzi scheme link, but there are board members who are close to this effective altruism movement. That was, and I'm not saying this has anything to do with Sam's departure or anything like that. We just don't know. But it is interesting that the EA movement, right, this effective altruism, we're going to try to like maximize our expected value and do whatever we can, you know, to make more money so that we can end up, you know, saving more lives in the future. It's represented on the open AI board. What can you tell us about that? Well, that's what actually drew me to write that story in the beginning is I had um, read a, a thread um, from Logan Kilpatrick, who's at OpenAI, um, when some news was coming out about Microsoft uh, uh, possibly infusing more money into OpenAI. And, um, uh, you know, I, I took a, Kilpatrick sort of put a thread of right from the OpenAI website, their structure page, which talks about how the company is set up. And one of those areas said that discussed the nonprofit board alongside the for-profit entity. And one of the points on that structure page explains that a six-member nonprofit board of directors is the half dozen group that will decide when OpenAI has quote unquote attained AGI. Um, when I looked into the members of that board, there are three employee members, um, Sam Altman, now gone, Greg Brockman, president, now off the, board. The, off the board, but still at the company, and Ilya, who is the chief scientist. And there are three other non-employee um, board members um, who seem very unrelated, but um, they all have some have had some tie. If you Google their names, if you look them up online, there are ties to the effective altruism movement. When I reached out to OpenAI, they got back to me with statements saying that none of the board members are quote, <laughs> effective altruists, um, but that, and that the three non-employee board members do not align with effective altruism in that way. But it was kind of like shaded a little bit, like, yes, one is on a board, but it's only because they're not so closely tied to the community. Um, so there was a little hedging there, but there's no doubt that they do have some ties. And even OpenAI itself has long had some ties, you know, again, not saying that they are part of the movement, but they definitely have had some ties that I, I talk about in the article. Really rough moment for effective altruism. Maybe we can stop taking this stuff at face value. Right. Okay, this is coming from uh, Hacker News. so. Just a comment. It's total speculation, but, you know, why not talk about it? So someone says, uh, put the pieces together. November 6, OpenAI Dev Day with feature with new features of the Build Your Own ChatGPT and more. November 9th, Microsoft cuts employees off from ChatGPT due to security concerns. November 15th, OpenAI announces no new ChatGPT plus signups. November 17th, OpenAI fires Sam Altman. Put the threads together. One theory, the new release has a serious security issue. This is just speculation. Leaked a bunch of data and it wasn't disclosed, disclosed, but Microsoft knew about it. This wouldn't be the first time. In March, there was an incident where users were seeing the private chats of other users. Further extending the theory, prioritizing getting to market overrode security privacy testing. And this most recent release caused something much, much larger. Sounds feasible to you? It doesn't align with what we just said about Microsoft just finding not out. Not knowing. Yeah, exactly. Okay, take that Microsoft not knowing out of the, this is, of, of course, <laughs> speculation. Take them out. So it, potentially something feasible, sounds it like. Would, well, mm -hmm. it would explain why Greg Brockman would have resigned from the board. There, mm -hmm. there could be that connection because I feel like that's still an open question. But there's um, also this, like, you know, this 
there's such a tolerance for bad data leaks in Silicon Valley. Like it had to be more than that. It seems like I, I agree. I feel like it has definitely to be more than that. Okay. That can't be. And, and again, you know, when we when we think about how this happened so quickly that this is the afternoon on a Friday towards the end of the stock market <laughs> right. opening, um, I feel like it's more than that. The stock market. So I put this on Twitter that the um, Microsoft stock slipped about one point five percent immediately after the news dropped. Now, people told me, you know, not a large amount. It's just one point five percent. The company's going to be fine. Still a two point seven three trillion dollar market cap, but that you know that decline accounts for just you know a cool few dozen billion dollars. Right. <laughs> um, is, is that so? How do how should we read that? Is it a problem for Microsoft that he's gone? I do think it's a problem for Microsoft if he's gone. For you know, it, again, it, it raises questions. You know, again, Satya Nadella was with uh, Sam Altman on stage at Dev Day touting their relationship, that they'd be building AGI together. The fact that if it becomes quite public that they didn't know until a minute before, that doesn't look for, good for Microsoft, does it? Um, no. so I feel like you know, catching Microsoft flat-footed would seem very odd. Um, so I, I, I definitely think in a variety of ways it doesn't bode well for Microsoft just in this moment. Of course, I don't think it necessarily means anything huge uh, in the long game, but who knows? I mean, I definitely just think this is a big mic drop and and there'll be a lot of fallout over the weekend, right? <laughs> yeah, exactly. And it's not the mic drop you do after you have a proud uh, moment. It's the mic drop where the mic slips out of your hands and you embarrassingly have to go pick it up. Sam Altman right. uh, tweets, I loved my time at OpenAI. It was transformative for me personally and hopefully the world a little bit. Most of all, I loved working with such talented people. We'll have more to say about what's next later. I mean, people are like, well, who cares about what's next? What about what happened? But it, this, it will come out. There's no doubt that it will come out. And I thought that that tweet kind of was a little funny. Like if it was something absolutely horrifying, it seems like he wouldn't put out that tweet, but I don't know. Right. Uh, so, okay. Final question for you. Who wins and who loses from this? Well, I definitely think that OpenAI loses, at least in the short term. I think there's going to, I don't think they that we've seen this kind of upheaval from them. I feel like they've been such steady rocks all year long, um, especially in this incredible wave. Like, I feel like for us, what's still a small company, I think people forget, you know, that it's still a small company. I think it still only has a few hundred employees. Mm -hmm. um, you know, they've obviously been shouldering quite a lot and, you know, both in terms of developing and building, but also criticism, lawsuits, you know, all sorts of things, um, you know, and, and you've never seen any kind of crack in that this year. I don't think, mm -hmm. I feel like everyone's been very tight together, kind of steady pace. That's my, been my observation. So I think that that, to me, that's partly why this comes as such a shock because it feels so off, off, to, <laughs> off for, for open AI. Um, I think Microsoft, it remains to be seen. I wonder if they could be seen as a winner in some ways, depending on what the deal is that they have with open AI. It possibly could be an opening for competitors, as you say. But, um, you know, I, I, I do think that when we learn more about what really happened, the winners and losers will become more clear. Yeah. Um, we should definitely do some of the jokes. Uh, one was, one was mine where I was like, man, if we find out there were people typing behind chat GPT this entire time, it's going to be crazy. <laughs> man, that was the thing that he was concealing. <laughs> there were a lot of people doing the joke that, um, you know, the first person to lose their job because of ChatGPT was Sam Altman. Right, that ChatGPT can replace CEOs. And then uh, finally, like, oh, how ironic is it that, you know, someone was inconsistent in their communication. <laughs> Got fired. <laughs> I mean, this might look terrible when we find out the cause and it turns out to be something totally awful. But in the meantime. In the meantime, we can have a little, little laugh. <laughs> yeah. Sharon Goldman, thanks so much for joining. This has been an emergency edition of Big Technology Podcast. Uh, more to come as we learn more, but we wanted to get something on the feed. Can't thank you enough. By the way, uh, tell people where to find your writing. Yes, you can find my writing at venturebeat.com. I'm Sharon Goldman. I cover AI. 
and you have you have a, a newsletter or you have a Twitter. Yes, I also your... have a Substack. I have Great. a Twitter at Sharon Goldman. You can check me out there. Okay. Sharon Gold on Twitter. X. Terrific. X Thank you, Sharon. Thank you, everybody, for listening. Emergency. We did it quickly. We'll be back on the on the feed for sure. But wanted to get you at least the very basic story, the implications. And if you're waking up to this news, well, holy moly. I mean, it's going to take a long time for it to settle in. That'll do it for us here. We'll see you next time on Big Technology Podcast.